last time on Punctuation. Professor Word and Inspector Brackett meet at Pop's soda shop. Inspector Brackett has discovered a couple of clues on the map. There is a foreign language on the map they can't figure out. But before he can get any answers, Professor Word rushes back to the studio to record the new episode. And now, part five of Punctuation. Hi everyone, welcome to Sean Allen Films, the educational series. I'm Sean Allen. This is episode five of Punctuation. In today's episode, we're going to be learning about the comma. In the last episode, we learned about exclamation marks. If you haven't seen this episode yet, click the annotation above, or if you can't see it, click the link down below entitled Previous Episode. So if you're ready, then let's get started. The comma is very useful in our everyday grammar. That's right, in our essays, our poems, our stories, whatever, anything that we've written down on paper. Trust me, if we didn't have the comma, well, let's just say that reading a sentence would be pretty messy. Once upon a time in a faraway land, a little girl was born to a kingdom with hair black as ebony, red lips like roses, skin white as snow. Well, that all sounds grand, but the sentences sound terrible without commas. Hey, are you reading Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs again? Um, no. No. As you can see, we need the comma when we are reading and even when we are speaking. Along the way in this video, we're going to be giving you rules on how to use the comma properly. You better get your pen or pencil ready because here comes rule number one. Rule number one. You can use a comma before a coordinating conjunction to help join two independent clauses. What are the coordinating conjunctions? Well, they are an, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. An independent clause is a group of words that can stand alone as a separate sentence. So how do we use a comma with a conjunction and an independent clause? Here's an example. He thought his shirt was clean, but discover that it had a stain. See where we use the comma? We put it before the word but, since that's the coordinating conjunction. We didn't use the comma after but because, well, that's incorrect. Here's another example. He was neither doing well nor succeeding in his classes. This sentence uses a comma correctly. Here's another example. The pool looked great and the water was clear. Wait. Where was the comma in that sentence? I didn't see it. As it turns out, we don't have to use a comma every time we use a coordinating conjunction and two independent clauses. If it's short and to the point, then it's okay. Let's look at one more example. Farmer Ted didn't finish removing the pile of bricks, so he decided to continue the next day. Uh-oh. That's not where a comma should go. Now, what should we call this example? Oh yeah, a run-on sentence. Since we are reading two sentences, it is better to use either a period or a semicolon. We will be learning about semicolons later. Just be careful when using commas around conjunctions. Trust me, you don't want run-ons in your essays. Ugh, it's a professor's worst nightmare. Okay, I think you get the idea about rule number one. Now let's move on to rule number two. Rule number two. You can use a comma after an introductory clause or phrase. This is very simple to remember because the phrase or clause tell us when, how, where, or why. Plus, it is also used when determining the main action of the sentence. Also, these phrases and clauses could be considered as adverbs. Here's an example. Before we go, let's go over the rules so that no one gets hurt or lost. As we can see, the phrase before the sentence requires a comma. It's very important that we use it or else, well, take a look. Before we go, let's go over the rules so that no one gets hurt or lost. Yeah, the sentence looks and sounds weird now. Here's a quick tip for you. If your phrase is very short, say 
two or three words, then you don't need to use a comma. It's not necessary. If you need more information, look at your textbook or ask your professor or teacher. All right, now let's move on to rule number three. Rule number three, you can use a comma between any item in a series. Here's an example. We need a slice of turkey, lettuce, bread, and mayonnaise to make a turkey sandwich. In this sentence, we are using the commas to separate the items in the list. The list consists of ingredients to make a particular sandwich. Here is one more example. In order for me to prove that water travels up the stems of plants, I will need to perform an experiment. I need a beaker, some water, food coloring, and celery. Hey, where's my celery? In this sentence, we are using commas to separate the materials needed for Professor Biochem's experiment. Hopefully you get the idea about this rule. Now let's move on to rule number four. Rule number four states that you can use a comma between coordinate adjectives that are not joined by the word and. What are coordinate adjectives? They are adjectives that can be joined by the conjunction and. Let's look at this example so you know what I'm saying. This right here is a big and red and juicy apple. Whoa, wait a second. Where are the commas? Well, we are showing how commas can be used using rule number four. Let's look at that sentence again, only this time with the commas added in. This right here is a big red juicy apple. As you can see, we can take out all the unnecessary ands and replace them with commas. Pretty simple, right? All right, now let's move on to the next rule, number five. Rule number five, we can use a comma to separate non-restrictive elements. However, we can't do this with restrictive elements. In case you are wondering, restrictive and non-restrictive elements are a group of words that describe a noun or pronoun. Here's an example to illustrate this. Inspector Brackett, after examining a clue, came up with a solution. Hmm. That sentence looks okay. But the group of words, after examining a clue, can be separated from the sentence with commas. Let's look at that example again, only this time, add in the commas. Inspector Brackett, after examining a clue, came up with a solution. Looks okay to me. Here is something that is very useful in determining if you need to use commas for these types of sentences. Try removing the section in between the commas and see if the sentence still makes sense. If it does, then good job. If the sentence sounds weird, well, you might need to either fix the grammar or the punctuation marks. You want me to say the next rule? Oh, okay, um, let me get the script. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> rule number six. You can use a comma to set off direct quotations. Oh, hey, I know how that works. Uh, Professor Biochem, uh, do you have an example? What? That's not the correct line. The line's supposed to be, Professor Word, do you have an example? I mean, it says it right here on the script. Oh, boy. Typo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to edit this part in because apparently he got that line wrong. So this is what it's really supposed to say. Hey, uh, Professor Wood, uh, do you have an example? I sure do, Professor Biochem. In my hand here, I have the Constitution of the United States of America. Here. Okay. Let's take a look at the first paragraph, shall we? <coughs> we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Well, as you can see, the quote is separated by a comma, plain and simple. Okay, we're almost finished with commas. 
So hang in there. Let's move on now to rule number seven. Rule number seven states that you can use commas for dates, addresses, titles, and numbers. When Sean said titles, he was referring to abbreviations for professional jobs or for people that have a master's degree or something really important. The last rule we'll look at is this. You can use commas to separate nouns from direct statements, the word yes and no, certain interjections, and interrogative tags. Bonus rule. You can use commas to separate transitional and parenthetical expressions, absolute phrases, and elements expressing contrast. Whew! <laughs> that was a lot of information about commas, my friends. So, if you need to review anything that was covered in today's video, just simply rewatch it. It's just that simple. Well, that's it for episode 5 of Punctuation. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. In the next episode, we're going to be learning about... Again? Come in! Hello. Uh, I know you're very busy, but uh, I need your help with something. Oh, well, <laughs> what can I do, Inspector? Well, um, this map happens to have a foreign language on it, and, um, well, I can't figure out what it is. Would you mind taking a look at it? Oh, sure. Hmm. Well, any ideas? Well, <laughs> believe you're not, Inspector, but uh, this language, it's Spanish. I mean, this one means apples, this one means oranges, this is avocados. Uh, oh, and this one, this one means treasure. Treasure? Treasure? Treasure. Treasure. Well, uh, what does the text say at the bottom left of the map? Well, I hate to tell you this, uh, Inspector, but uh, I'm a little rusty with my Spanish. Uh, is it okay if I can hang on to this and I'll try to translate it? Oh, sure. Just make sure nothing happens to it. We don't want it to go missing. Oh, don't worry. The map is safe with me. Very well, then. Well, goodbye. Oh, um, well, uh, that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, in our next episode, we're going to be learning about the apostrophe. Before you go, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button, favorite this video, and leave a comment down below telling us what you thought about today's show. Be sure to also check out Sean Allen Films The Vlog Series and Sean Allen Films The Desiland Video Series. And please follow the official Twitter and Facebook pages of Sean Allen Films The Educational Series. All the links are down below in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more educational videos. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, keep on learning. Will Sean be able to figure out the message on the map? Will he be able to figure out where the treasure is located? Find out next time on Punctuation. As you can see, we can take out the unnecessary ands and replace them with commas. Pretty simple, right? All right, now let's move on to the next level. Oh, next level. What am I, Super Mario? Yoo-hoo! <laughs> oh, there they go. They got stuck again. All right, guys, come on. Get on stuck. Get on stuck, you little jellies. There we go. Ah, it spilled. It spilled a little. Make sure the label isn't showing because I got this from the store. <laughs> Oops. Ooh, some water's traveling down my arm. There's a build up of sweat in my glove. Blech, gross. Oh, um, well, that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. In our next episode, we're going to be learning about... Ugh, I forgot. <laughs> Hold on. Apostrophes. Apostrophes. <laughs>